what we're going to do with you all today is do a, a cadet aviation experience flight, which is three of you at a time with the pilots to go for a flight in the local area to experience flying in our Diamond, new Diamond DA-40 aircraft. This is the aircraft you're going to fly in today. This is what it looks like. Um, new Diamond DA-40 NG. Um, very new, only uh, started operating with us in February tw this year, 2019. We have a fleet of eight of these, um, based here at Point Cook, Amberley, and at Richmond in New South Wales. And our motto is to inspire you within the field of aviation. Um, so we're not, it's not a training flight today. What today is all about is you guys' experience um, going for a fly and uh, that uh, fly in our Diamond DA-40 aircraft. Now just about the aircraft itself, as I said, it's a Diamond DA-40 NG aircraft. Runs on Jet A1, uh, not the old Avgas that uh, previous aircraft have run on. So they actually run on jet fuel, not Avgas. It's, four, it's a four-seat aeroplane. Um, and for our flight today, it'll be at one pilot in the front, front left, and three passengers. Or for flying training that we also do with these aircrafts, it's a student and a, an instructor in the front. The aircraft is fully equipped with the latest avionics, including the Garmin NXI 1000, and is exclusively operated by the AAFC's Elementary Flying Training School, and that's who we are. Now, I want to talk quickly about airside and what is airside and the rules that we have airside. Airside is the part of the airfield that has the runways, the taxiways, the hangars, and all that sort of stuff. Whereas landside, where we are now, is the buildings, mess, all that sort of thing. Airside, however, we have a specific important set of rules. And those rules are to wear a high visibility vest, being um, a fluorescent colour that can easily be seen. So you'll be always escorted by an EFT staff member or your pilot at all times. And those guys who are qualified airside to escort you will be wearing a yellow vest. What you'll be issued with while you are actually airside is an orange vest. So the people that you need to speak to if you have any questions or queries airside will be the people wearing the yellow vest. Now, the important thing is that we don't actually fly with these wearing these, uh, these high-vis vests. The reason for that is they're made of nylon and in the very, very, very unlikely event that there is a cabin fire on the aircraft, we don't want to be wearing nylon um, next to our skin. We take them with you in the aircraft, but not actually wearing it. When you get in the aircraft, you'll take it off. When you get out of the aircraft, you'll put one back up back on. I don't want anyone wearing any loose hats um, or having any objects that could blow around while airside. Um, they could act, cause damage in the wind, cause damage to you, another cadet, or to an aircraft. Um, so ID tags off and in pockets. And uh, fur felt hats, we don't want to wear those at all. What I will accept is a firm fitting baseball cap. When airside, always walking only, do not run. Always stay well clear of propellers. You will be escorted making sure, and we'll make sure that you don't go anywhere near a propeller. But please ensure that you don't go close to the, to the propeller. Um, with this aircraft, when you're boarding, and I'll explain a little bit later, um, when you're boarding this aircraft, especially at the front, you will be in front of the wing on the propeller side. However, we'll make sure that you don't go near that, but you also need to make sure that you don't go near the propeller. We'll always approach the aircraft from behind, from the rear. We'll know when to approach the aircraft, uh, when certain switches are turned off, and also when the pilot gives us the, the okay to, to approach the aircraft and when airside, looking and listening at all times. Baggage. If you have a backpack or something like that, there's no need to take it with you on the aircraft. There's nowhere to put it, although there is a baggage, baggage compartment on this aircraft, there's no need to take it with you. It's a short flight, so your backpack can, can, can definitely stay here. Now the DA-40 has three separate entry and exit points. Uh, one for the pilot or captain on the left front and two separate entry points for the passengers. One on the right front, and two at the, on the left-hand side at the rear. 
Now, when we're approaching the aircraft, as I said, we will approach it from behind, but uh, the front passenger has to get into a different spot to the rear passengers. So the front passenger will be escorted around the leading edge of the right-hand wing to get into the right side of the aircraft. The rear passengers um, will be taken directly behind the left-hand wing and using some steps up onto the wing and enter through the door on the left-hand rear of the aircraft. Now, when we're getting up onto the aircraft, there's a specific way we need to do it so that we can do it safely. <coughs> the aircraft is a low-wing aircraft, however, the wing is fairly hard to step up onto. When we're approaching from the rear, there is no step to step up onto the wing, the wing route of the aircraft. You'll notice the lines there on the wing route, that is the walkway. So when you're up on the wing of the aircraft, you need to stay on that area. And we will actually provide you with some steps um, behind the wing so they can easily step up onto the wing route. Now, when up on the wing and when you're about to enter into the aircraft, you need to identify a handle which is above the left-hand front seat. It's hard to see from the outside, but if you put your head in, you can definitely see it and put your, hand, your left hand on that handle. From there, you need to put your left foot or your outside foot first into the aircraft. And you can reach back and touch the, the back side of the actual the, the frame of the, of the canopy and put your left foot in. Please be aware of, on the rear door especially, of the, the red lever at the top of the door that opens, that opens the door. It does stick down, so you need to be aware that you don't hit your head on that lever. Once into the seat, sit yourself down. Um, if you're the first person in the aeroplane and there's two people going to sit in there, in the back, please move across to the right-hand side, and then the other person can get into the left-hand side next to the door. But the first thing we need to do when you get in the aircraft is to put on your seatbelt. Now, like a car, it is a sash seatbelt, so it has a sash and a strap around your waist, but unlike a car, the waist strap um, will most likely need to be adjusted depending on your waist size, just so it fits in nice and firm. Just like that. Now, when exiting the rear seat, if you're on the right-hand side, please come across to the left-hand side and using that handle again and reaching back to the frame of the aircraft, you can lift yourself up and then step out onto the wing, ensuring that you don't stand on the seat. It's not a good idea to stand on these seats because it will damage them over time. So if you could step out onto the wing, and then using the steps, the balance at all times is to actually come down off the, uh, off the rear of the wing onto the steps backwards. Now, when you're entering the front right of the aircraft, which is in the, uh, um, the right, the captain sits on the left, there is a handle up on the dash, you'll notice it. Um, please use that handle at all times. From there, we can actually put some steps down for you as well at the front, but there is a footstep at the front of the aircraft. So once again, stepping up onto the steps, then up onto the wing, using uh, the aircraft frame behind the seat, as well as the handle up on the dash. And then stepping once again with your outside foot first into the aircraft. In the front, you need to be extra careful of, obviously, the screens, the, the uh, glass screens on the, in the cockpit, as well as on the front of the right-hand seat, there is a piece of safety equipment. It is red. Um, it's an escape knife, if you like, um, and it's in a bracket. So we make sure that we don't knock that particular uh, item out of its bracket so that's rolling around on the floor. It's uh, commonly called a crash axe, and it is exactly, exactly that in the event of, of an emergency, um, it is used to, to open the canopy. So once into the front right-hand seat, sitting down, and just like a car again, although the seat belt comes from the outside in the front, um, pop the seat belt on and adjust the waist, waist strap, the lap strap, just so it's nice and firm. Now, when you're getting out of the front seat, please use the handle on the dash, as well as the rear of the canopy. Stepping right up, once again, not standing on the seat. We don't want to stand on the seat at any stage in this aircraft. And then outside foot, stepping out onto the wing, 
and then stepping down onto the steps, once again going backwards for the best stability so that you do not fall or trip. Now the DA40, just like the uh, entry, entry points and exit points, has three emergency exit points and they are the same, same spots. So one off the, uh, the right hand rear of the aircraft and two at the front in front of the leading edges. With the doors, the door operations, um, there's a door lever on the front canopy and there's also a door on the lever on the back. There's other red levers as well. Um, so therefore the best thing to do at this point of time is to explain the operation of the door levers at the aircraft once we get there. Um, otherwise it's too much information and you may be confused. And some of the red levers are used in case of an emergency only, so we don't want to activate those unnecessarily. So we'll identify those to you, show you the door operation, and especially the person sitting on the left hand side at the back will show you how to close, lock, unlock and open that door as required. Now in the aircraft is some emergency equipment. There's a fire extinguisher. The fire extinguisher, which is in the rear right hand seat, just near the feet of the person sitting in the rear right hand seat. There's also a first aid kit, which is just behind the rear right hand seat, which is just below the floor in fact. There's an arrow, a diagram and an arrow pointing towards where that first aid kit is. I was talking before about what we call the crash axe, uh, which is actually attached to the front of the front right hand seat. And that's what we need to be very careful of for the front passenger getting into the aircraft, that they don't kick it out of its bracket. And there's also up on the dash a red switch, which is the emergency located transmitter. Now that's going to be usually in the armed position, but please know where that is uh, in case you need to switch it on uh, at the direction of the pilot only. Now in the aircraft, everyone will have a headset. Headset, it looks just like this. This is a training model, it's a bit old, but it's, they're exactly the same brand, same colour. Now the headset serves two purposes. The first purpose is your hearing protection. Although this aircraft is not terribly loud, uh, over time it could do damage to your hearing. So therefore we have hearing protection. The headset is also your communications. Your communications with each other in the aircraft. Definitely your communications with the pilot and the pilot's communications with ground and other aircraft. Now you'll notice the headset has two plugs. It's got a small one and a slightly larger one. And they, are, they actually plug into a particular spot in the aircraft for your seat. These, uh, these plug into behind the centre console, so the people sitting in the back will have the best access to those plugs. The top two plugs, left seat, which is the captain's seat or the pilot's seat, the second two run of pl uh, plugs is for the right hand front seat. The third run is for the left hand rear seat. And the lowest run is for the right hand rear seat. And these need to be plugged into the right spots because although you can hear um, for the people in the front, if they're plugged into the wrong spot, um, they may not be able to transmit clearly unless they're plugged into the right spots. So with the life jacket, there's a couple of different features on the outside. There's the uh, reflective tape, um, as well as a certain number of straps. Now, what we need to do is put this on just like a backpack, and the front obviously goes to the front. Okay, so pop that on, like so. We're just making sure that it's not twisted, which it looks pretty good. Now with the buckle, just need the small one to go through the large one. That's the way, and that's done. Now we need to tighten this to, to the waist strap up, so what we need to do is both of those on either side at the same time you can pull them directly backwards, nice and slowly, not too tight, that's the way. And the last thing we need to do is to put on the strap, it goes between your legs and it's actually called the crutch strap. An important thing with this one though is it doesn't need to be too tight, okay? If by chance and very unlikely chance that we do end up in the water at some stage and you have to activate the life jacket, that's when you tighten that one up. Now I just want you to identify where the uh, activation flute is, which is just here, it says pull down to inflate. So it's just underneath, it's a red, like a, like a trumpet shape um, 
plastic uh, handle and that needs, needs to be pulled straight down to actually inflate the life jacket. So once inflated, the actual life jacket does have, I'll show one on this demo one here, does have a few features. It has a tube where you can actually put more air into it if you need to, um, and at the same time you can let air out. The life jacket actually also has a light, which is activated automatically once in water, and also a whistle to attract attention. Okay. Uh, however, the life jacket does look slightly different when it's inflated, that particular life jacket, it also has a hood on it. Now, mobile phones. We will allow you to carry mobile phones on this flight. Um, but iPads and tablets, they're a bit too big and hard to stow, so we say no to iPads and tablets. What we do ask you to do though, is to put your phone on aeroplane mode um, when you go for a fly. Now the reason for that is, it's not actually to do with protecting navigational equipment on this flight. Uh, however, it will eliminate any distraction that you may have. We don't want people um, texting, taking phone calls while they're actually on this flight because we want you to take in the experience. You can take photos, however, still um, when, you are, when your phone is on aeroplane mode. But what you need to do, if there's anyone else going to be in that photo, you need to ask their permission first. Now, as per normal Civil Aviation Safety Authority law, there is no smoking while airside or on this flight. As cadets, I'm sure that nobody smokes. At the same time, there's not to be the use of any electronic cigarettes either. Now, it is possible that you may experience a little bit of turbulence during this flight. So what you need to do is ensure that your seatbelts remain fastened at all times. It is also possible that at some stage during the flight, you may not feel 100% right. You may feel a little bit sick. If this is the case, you need to speak up. You need to tell the pilot immediately. There are sick bags on board the aircrafts, but it is not our goal to let you get to that situation where you actually become physically sick. If we know about it, we can do something about it. If, however, you do become sick and use one of those sick bags, that sick bag becomes yours. Do not leave it in the aircraft, make sure you take it with you and you place it in a bin. Now there will be a pilot safety briefing at the aircraft, which will be quite detailed at the aircraft, showing things in particular like door handle operation, what to do in the event of an emergency, um, acti li uh, activating life jackets, things like that. So what I have gone through is the seat belts, doors and exits, emergency equipment in the aircraft, life jackets, smoking and the use of electronic cigarettes. What I haven't done yet is the brace position, I've spoken about the brace position. Now the brace position in this aircraft is sitting in the aircraft with your seatbelt on. There is no particular put your head forward uh, into your lap or anything like that. Because it's fitted with the particular side type of seatbelts that it's got, the brace position is to sit in the aircraft with your feet flat on the floor and your hands on your thighs or on your knees. And in the event of an emergency, remain in your seats until instructed and do not distract the pilot. There will be further, more detailed briefings by the pilot um, before you take off in the aircraft. Now, before you fly, make sure you have a comfort stop. Go to the toilet if you need to. If you need to. Take a water bottle with you. Um, it may not be taken with you on the flight. It may be able to be taken with you on the flight, but take it with you. It can be left in the staging area where it won't be touched until you come back. But what you do need to do is sign the passenger manifest for each flight. We'll show you how to do that. And also declare on that manifest that you're not carrying any dangerous goods. But most importantly, I need you guys to relax and please enjoy the experience. Because that's what we're here for. We're here to inspire you.